Did you know that if you're a U.S. green card holder, you have to both report and pay income taxes on worldwide income, not just when you're a U.S. citizen, but when you're a green card holder. If you didn't know that, congratulations, you're in good company because that's one of the top five biggest misconceptions that immigrants have about their situation, about their status. And I'm gonna talk about those five misconceptions in this video. So first of all, my name is Parviz Malakudi. I'm an immigration attorney licensed in California. And these are the top five misconceptions that I see from immigrants uh, in my practice, okay? So this is, there's nothing scientific about the accumulation of this list. This is just based on what I see day in, day out, talking to tens of immigrants every single day in my practice on Facebook, on the internet, et cetera, et cetera. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the first misconception I see is that immigrants to the United States think that they do not have to report an address change to USCIS unless they have an immigration application pending. And that's simply wrong. All immigrants in the United States, except when they become a, a U.S. citizen, all immigrants have got to report address change to USCIS by law. Okay, that's a law. Now, it's a very little known law. It's not one that's, that's enforced that frequently or that harshly now, but that is the obligation. So the way you, you uh, report your address change is by using an AR-11. This is a paper version. You can also file it online. You can also call into USCIS and basically make that request. So that's the first misconception that I see. The second most common misconception that I see is that immigrants don't know that if you have an approved I-130, okay, that's a petition for alien relative, and you're not ready to move forward, you've got to call the National Visa Center or write to them to let them know, okay, every single year that you want that I-130 to be renewed, okay? If you don't do that, the I-130 could be considered abandoned, it could be closed, and then you have to start from square one with the immigration process, okay? So I have a video about that, make sure you check that out. That's the second most common misconception that I see. The third most common misconception is the one I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which is income taxes. So many people that come, that immigrate to the United States think that they don't have any obligation to report and pay federal income taxes on worldwide income, okay, in the United States until they become a U.S. citizen. No, you have that obligation once you become a green card. Uh, the IRS, in IRS lingo, the IRS considers an American person to be either a U.S. green card holder or a U.S. citizen, okay? So anybody that's one of those two is considered an American person for the purposes of the, of the IRS and you have that obligation, which is kind of a unique obligation in the United States. The vast majority of other countries in the world don't have that obligation. So that's a tricky one. Make sure, especially if you have assets or significant income abroad as a U.S. green card holder, make sure you're aware of that obligation, you're complying with it. If you haven't become a green card holder yet, and this might be a deal breaker, you might wanna consider that before you decide to get legal permanent residence, AKA a green card in the United States. So that is the third most common misconception that I see. The fourth most common misconception that I see is confusion with regards to when there's a conflict between state law and federal law, okay? Especially with regards to immigrants. Let me give you an example, okay? So there's two, issues basically in the United States where we have an overlap of federal law and state, state law. There's many other issues as well, but I'm talking only about these two. First is marijuana, okay? Basically consumption, sale, purchase of marijuana, okay? Some states have it legal, for example, California where I'm from, but federally it's still illegal. If you're an immigrant, you've got to be in, in compliance with both state law and federal law. Really anybody has to be in compliance with both state law and federal law, but it's especially sensitive for immigrants because in addition to the possible criminal consequences, there could be severe immigration consequences, okay? The second example that I see is firearms. Okay. Under federal law, okay, it's illegal for an undocumented immigrant to purchase, sell, even to, to basically uh, be in possession of firearms. However, some states don't have a law against that, okay? So uh, I see a lot of undocumented people, especially in the dreamer community, unfortunately, that they think mistakenly, because this stuff is confusing, that it's okay for them to purchase a firearm, to go to a firing range, etc., etc. It's not. Remember, if an activity is illegal at the federal law level, it doesn't matter whether it's illegal in your state or not, you can't do it, okay? So that's the fourth most common misconception I see with immigrants, okay? And the fifth and final most common misconception that I see with immigrants is surrounding expungement, okay? So expungement of 
criminal convictions. And this is a two-part actual misconception, okay? Um, the first misconception I see is that a lot of people, a lot of immigrants think that an expunged conviction no longer counts for the purposes of immigration, okay? That's simply not the case, okay? It, unfortunately, if somebody has a conviction and later it's expunged, okay, it still counts for immigration, okay? USCIS does not consider an expunged conviction, okay? Basically, a, a conviction that was dismissed due to some sort of rehabilitation later, USS doesn't consider that to be gone from your record. It's still on your record. Now, the flip side of that misconception is that some people, some immigrants actually know that. Good for you if you're one of them, okay? But the second misconception I see is that they then think that there's no benefit, okay, to expunging the conviction if you have one. No immigration benefit. That's also not necessarily the case, okay? Let me give you an example. So, in some instances, okay, some immigrants can have a criminal conviction and get it expunged. The conviction still counts, it's still present for the purposes of USCIS, but expunging the conviction can actually still help with the immigration case by showing rehabilitation, okay? Now there's three, there's at least three big uh, contexts in which this can be the case. The first one is naturalization, okay? If you are naturalizing, one of the requirements is you have to have a period of good moral character for five years prior to applying, or three years if you're married to a US citizen. If you committed a, a crime outside of that five-year period, okay, and you want to show that you've been rehabilitated, that there's no carryover from whatever the issues was from, from that crime into the five-year good moral character period, expunging that conviction can be one factor that can help you, okay? So the first example that an expungement can help with is naturalization. The second is DACA, okay? There's certain types of crimes, significant misdemeanors, which basically exclude a DACA recipient or somebody who is DACA eligible from being able to apply for DACA, okay? If that DACA recipient gets that conviction expunged in some states, not everywhere, but in California where I'm at, this is the case for some convictions. If the Dreamer gets that, uh, that conviction expunged, they can potentially qualify, be eligible to apply for DACA again. So that's the second example. Third example is I-601 and I-601A, uh, basically hardship waivers, okay? Uh, these are extreme hardship waivers. If you are somebody that's applying for an I-601, I-601A, and you have a conviction, particularly if it's a misdemeanor conviction before, getting it expunged can help to show USCIS that you have good moral character, that you merit the discretion of the Attorney General. They're still gonna consider that that conviction exists, okay? But it's basically on your part, taking a step forward to make sure that you're showing USCIS that you're doing everything you can to rehabilitate yourself. So anyway, that's it. Those are the top five misconceptions that I see among immigrants. Make sure that you're not falling in any related to those make sure you understand those and if you have questions about it put them in the comment section I'd love to hear from them and answer your general questions if you have specific questions if you need to talk about your particular situation click on the link below and book a consultation otherwise have a great one